There's nothing like Lee. And this is the Betfred Super League. Hello and welcome to another edition of Eddie and Steve-O, the podcast, supported as always by the Rugby League's title sponsors, Bet Fred. Thanks to all of you who messaged last week, having enjoyed the conversation with the Lee Leopards owner, Derek Beaumont. This week, with Steve-O sadly indisposed once again, I'm delighted to be joined by the Chief Executive Officer of the club sitting pretty at the top of the Bet Fred Super League table. It's Carl Fitzpatrick of the Warrington Wolves, of course. Carl, can I say, first of all, many thanks for giving me your time today. First of all, what a fantastic start to the season. Let's not tempt fate, but five <laughs> from five, fantastic for you. We're going all right. Uh, it sounds nice, that, doesn't it? Sitting, sitting pretty at the top of the league. I think, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. Look, look, Eddie, it, it's really early days yet. Uh, five, but it's nice to be five from five, and I suppose zero from five. Uh, and as I've said previously, I think it's the manner of how we've gone about our wins this this season thus far. We've had very four, five different games. You look at the first game, we blew Leeds away. You know, and you look at the second game, which is a real you mean, game of attrition, war of attrition against Huddersfield that was fortunate to come out on top and Huddersfield are a, a good side. And then uh, I'm trying to think, was that Salford, was it, who blew us away first half, then we came back, so so tremendous resilience. And then... Uh, the tough game at Hulk Yard was was in there as well, where there's been a there's probably been a graveyard of performances up there at uh, Hulk Yard where we've where we struggled, and then we've come up against a, a a Lee side who we played in the friendly was very very good, and that was a tasty game. Uh, obviously, a lot of ex Warrington plays in there, and again we come out on top. So, although last season we won three games as well, I think the manner in which we've gone about our business this season is is very much, very much different. But look, it's it's really early days. It's a long season, 27 games, playoffs, cup games to come. So we're not getting carried away, but we're, we're happy with what we're doing at the moment. And I think there's a lot of improvement in us, Eddie. I think you look at the squad, we've got probably three, four, possibly five players that we're pushing for a starting spot yet to come back. Obviously, James Harrison's missed out. Josh Maguire come back from his ban against Catalan. Gil Dudson, who's close to being fit for this week. Connor Wrench, the young out, outside back, uh, who will be who'll be pushing the outside backs for a for a spot in the seventeen. So look, we're not in a we're not in a bad position, but look, uh, we know they've got a lot of hard work ahead of us. You have got a lot of hard work ahead of you. You had a lot of hard work last year. You had a lot of hard work to keep going, for goodness sake. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was horrendous for this club. This isn't a club that sits second bottom of the table at the end of the campaign. I bet it was tough. It, look, it, 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 it was very tough and it's been well, well documented. The experience that we went through wasn't, wasn't, wasn't pleasant at all, but... We we had a plan. We knew there was going to be some changes. Or we had to get through some changes uh, just due to the age of the squad, due to the players off contract. Uh, but we we probably didn't envisage how difficult it was going to be, and and envisage certainly how the how the season on uh, unfolded. But as you say, as they say, I mean, what doesn't what doesn't kill you makes you makes you strong. <laughs> and I think that's that's certainly true of what happened. Last season, a club of this size and a club with the investment and the support that we have, we do expect to be up there challenging. And and I understand why a lot of supporters was disgruntled and and, and uh, disappointed in last season. But we knew we had to go through probably a tough period to come out the other side and be in a better position. Now, look, time will tell if uh, if that is to be true. We are in a better position. We've certainly started this season in in better in a better position. Uh, but yeah, it was it was certainly difficult. But you learn a lot about yourself, and you learn a lot about people around you, how you conduct yourself in in extreme adverse. And I think a lot of the players learnt a lot last year as well. Uh, let's just take George Williams for example. I think George was even though he's been sensational this season. Uh, was great in the World Cup. 
I thought he was good last year as well, playing behind a pack that was struggling to get any momentum, uh, behind on the scoreboard. He never stopped trying, uh, and he was our joint player of the year with with Matty Ashton. We bloody a lot of young players as well. So Josh Doolis, Connor Wrench, we're given long stints, long runs in the in the team, and I think we're we're probably reaping the benefits of that as well now. So yes, it was it was a disastrous season without question, but I think we learnt a lot along the way. I'm sure you did. And when Daryl came in, he came in with a fantastic reputation. That's why you got him, because he's, he's a great coach. You don't become a great, a great coach and then a bad coach no. overnight. You don't become a bad team and then a good team yeah, yeah. overnight. What has changed this year? You say you've got the biggest pack in the yeah. Super League, in your opinion. And I think you're probably right, because this pack at Warrington, historically, has not been the biggest. Yeah, I think, look, I think, I think so. I think we go back to... Uh, since Malls, Adrian Morley, Carvel, mm. Chris Hill, Mike Cooper, since they've left, we've probably not really replaced them uh, in terms of firepower up 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 front. Uh, in terms of the collective, I think we've had individuals that have been that 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 have, that have been great. So I think we've got that this year. Uh, but I think the word to sum us up, the best word to sum us up, Eddie's probably balanced. I think when you look at our squad, our team. It's got great balance to it. We've got a big pack. We've got pace out wide, as we saw against Lee at the weekend, where, uh, for my example, Matt, Matt, Matt Dufty uh, shows blistering pace after 33 seconds we score a try. But I think the balance is uh, reflected really well in the halfbacks with uh, Josh Drinkwater and, and George, George Williams, where the previous, I've mentioned this previously, where the previous halfback partner to George has probably been too similar. We've had Stefan in there, we've had Gareth Widdop, who were both tremendous plays in their own right but probably similar to George quite instinctive where Josh has come in who's a functional seven he gets us around the park he's an organiser uh, re- real rugby league anorak uh, student of the game where he's, he's a great foil for George where allows George do his running game do his things off the cuff where uh, Josh keeps on track and marshals us around the pitch so I think balance is, the, is, 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 is probably the best word and I think you look at the young players that have come in They've they've come through Gary Chambers, who's doing an incredible job in terms of setting standards. He's ruthless on those kids, so they've they've come in and set not setting the standards, but they're living up to the standards that the senior players that we've brought in has uh, has brought to organisation as well. So we've had a real big focus on character and, and leadership, our quality of, of uh, the qualities of, of of leaders coming into the organisation, which was really big as part of our recruitment process. And you look at the players we've brought in, the likes of Josh Maguire. Paul Vaughan, Gil Dudson, Josh Drinkwater got outstanding leadership qualities and that was really important when we was looking at our, our recruitment for this season as well. Look, five swallows don't make a summer. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. But last year, and we'll move away from, from yeah. last year after this, looking back, did you ever, A, doubt yourself? Did you ever doubt the fact that you brought the wrong man in to run the club? I know you got... Dogs abuse on social media, the two of you. <laughs> the whole club did, the owners did. Yeah. Did you ever sit back and think, what the hell am I doing this for? Why am I here? No, not at all. It's something I'm, I love and I'm passionate about. I've been at a club now for 12 years. Uh, it's a tremendous club. And uh, but look, there's probably times when you're on your own, you think, bloody hell, this is, this is a difficult list. But not, not most, not for myself really but for my family and I mentioned this before where when they're being exposed to the, to the abuse look I can accept and I understand it comes with territory I'm not saying it's nice uh, or it's or it's right but I accept it it does come with this being in this being in this position but when it's upsetting your family that's when you think I mean that's not that's not great but in terms of a doubt to myself no uh, not not at all in terms of doubting Daryl's ability no not a, not at all uh, when we interviewed him, he actually said, "Look, this is a rebuild list, just due to the age of the squad and the length of contracts that we, that that, uh, that the players had left. So we knew that. I don't like using the word transition, but it probably was a little bit of a transition. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it, we probably didn't envisage how difficult it was was going to be. But in terms of doubting Daryl's ability, he's done it time and time again at Castleford with limited resources." Losing, do you mean the best players regular on on regular occasions, season after season, uh, but yet they've been up there, uh, up there challenging. So in terms of questioning whether Daryl was the right man, 
uh, nor we understood what he's, his values were, what he wanted from the team, what a Daryl Powell team looks like. It's just the players at that time last year probably didn't fit what Daryl wanted. And look, there's some very good players that have gone on to different clubs, Wigan and, and, and Castle Forrick, for example, have some players that, that, have, that have moved on Lee as well. They are good players in their own right. But it probably wasn't the players that suited how Daryl wanted to uh, build his team or how he wanted to play. So we knew that we needed to give him another opportunity to go through another recruitment cycle to bring his 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 players in and have his stamp on the team. And I think we're seeing that this season. Yeah, so far so good. And you're up there with Catalan Dragons. Yeah. Over Easter, you go to Perpignan. Yeah. Now the Warrington fans love a weekend in the yeah, south of France. This is going to be. A blockbuster, isn't it? I mean, it's not going to make or break either of your season, no. but it's going to be one hell of a game. No, not only we've got a few tough games coming up before that. Uh, we're starting at Casper this week, but if, if results go to plan, it's live on Sky Sports, one of our fantastic broadcast partners, that it could be first v second, which is going to be a real box office game. And you're right, Taylor, we have a, do you mean, the support this season has been incredible, you think? Uh, against Leeds, our first our first home game was. Do you mean attendance was tremendous against Lee? It's the biggest attendance we've had against Lee in Super League. So, considering what went through last year, the supporters have kept the belief in the team, in Daryl, and in the players that uh, that stayed and the players were brought in. Uh, so yeah, we do expect a, a big following across there in uh, in at Easter. I'm sure you do, and the Warrington people love a, a good weekend away. OK, it's a brand new season. You're only five games in. Yeah. It's a new drawing board, if you like, because IMG now yeah. are looking at the game. Are yeah. you, all of you, all of you CEOs and clubs, are you behind IMG? Because they've got some revolutionary yeah. ideas that they've only just sort of whispered so far. Yeah, look, I think it's exciting. Look, I can't comment on all the CEOs, but being in that room when they presented the, the recommendations a couple of weeks ago now at the RFL Council meeting, uh, the general consensus, I think, was was, was really positive for one. It's something uh, we as a club work, we really support, we really get behind. And what, what pleased me, Eddie, is they they speak often about it's the wraparound stuff that they need to get right, not tinkering with on-field. On-field, as, as you and I probably agree, it's sensational, it's the best spot in the world, it's gladiatorial, it's brutal. It's, and if it's uh, going well, people will come. Exactly. If it's going well, people will come. It's all the wraparound stuff, how the game's dressed, market, marketed, uh, the media exposure. It's, it's getting all that uh, in order. And look, the, the model that they've put forward, it's not perfect. Uh, they'll probably be difficult to put forward a model that has is perfect and is everyone's going to be happy with. But I think that it's it's certainly the right direction to go in. Uh, there's a couple, like I say, there's a couple of things there which probably needs to be looked at. For example, participation that's not in the criteria. Uh, the promotion and relegation aspect is not that's not straightforward. Maybe that needs to look to be looked at. But look, we brought them in to do a job. Now I think it's important that we do give them the autonomy. Obviously, in consultation with 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 uh, with all the clubs and they're the recommendations that that they've put forward. So I think it's important that we do support it. Uh, we certainly do from a from a club. As I mentioned, it's, it's not it's not perfect and there's some tinkering to be done. But in the main, I think 100% it is the right direction of travel. Two areas of concern for me personally, because I'm a fan now. Yeah. You know, I'm an observer. I watch the telly. I shout at the telly. I shout and scream and all that sort of You're a fan, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> People say that because yeah. I live here. But yeah. honestly, I'm delighted you're doing well yeah. because all my mates now in the town are Happy. thrilled to bits. You Good. know, last year they were down in the dumps. This yeah, year they've got okay. a smile on their face. Two areas of concern for me. Why are we thinking about rebranding? We were the original Super League. Why didn't we patent that yeah. name in 1996? Yeah. Do you know what, Eddie? And I got asked it, I've been asked this previously. I'm a bit mixed on it. So, obviously, there's a lot of Super League. In fact, I, I come across one the other day. Actually. Is, it, is it the Triathlon Super oh, there's, League? There's, there's so many. Super yeah, League, there's, Women's Super League. There's the Women's. Lot, yeah, there's there's a lot out there. So, obviously, it's We're that. the original. We are. We are. Do, you know, do you know what I like about the Super League brand is the S? Yes. It's like the Superman, Superman logo. I think it looks absolutely really, really cool. And I think as a sport, we've probably not utilised that enough. When you look at the NBA, the NFL, for example, NHL, 
the, the, that brand, the brand is on every piece of merchandise. You cannot buy uh, an official uh, NFL t-shirt without having the NFL logo on there. And I don't think we've utilised that to the best of our ability. Uh, but also, I understand on the other side of the argument that it has been diluted uh, and some negative connotations associated with it now, particularly the European Super League that, uh, that fortunately got disbanded. So I, un- I understand both sides of the argument. So it'd be interesting to see what... Uh, what IMG come up with but yeah I think it would be a shame to lose the Super League logo I just think there's an opportunity there that we've not tapped into very much so and talk about European Super League we are the original Original. European Super League I remember in Paris 96 my first words and the European Super League is underway yeah it was a brainchild of Maurice Lindsay it was unless unless I could be wrong God God bless Maurice I think Maurice was, was ahead of his time but yeah, I agree with you. And everything that that represents, that I think the guys that play our sport are, are real life supermen and superwomen, uh, which is which is, which is great to say. Now, so yeah, it would be a shame if we lost that logo. But I also understand that the negative connotations associated with the uh, the brand the brand Super League. Yeah, if something maybe needs tinkering with, but please, you know, if you have got any influence in that council yeah. room, stick with the yeah, S and the Super. Yeah. The other thing that bothers me personally. This is going to be allegedly the last Magic Weekend year. Why are we chucking away a fantastic event like that? You look, and I have to agree with that, Eddie. And I think again, this is probably up for discussion. Uh, I'm a big fan of of Magic. I think again, have we really maximised that opportunity in creating a real festival feel? Uh, I know the players enjoy playing there. Uh, certainly, coaches like like. Do you know what I mean? going up there as well as do supporters uh, so television viewers love it television, television viewers companies love it. love it yeah I think it's fantastic the viewing figures are strong for that uh, for that for that weekend so yes I agree with that and I think we probably need to have a look at that I don't think look it, it's, it's not it may not totally be off the, t- off, off the table Uh I, as I say, I like it. I know that's similar to the views of other clubs. I'm also of other clubs that are not, not fans of it. But personally, I do I do like it. You look, the NRL have replicated it. I know. They don't take much on, exactly. on board that we invent, do they? No. No, when I went over to uh, I went over to Brisbane last year when we was on our recruitment mission uh, over, in, over, over in Australia. And again... Great, great festival feel. It was, it was fantastic. And I go back to my other point: Have we really maximised the magic opportunity? Uh, and then, even when, when we've done that, if it's not then worked, at what they deem worked and what hasn't, then we could make a decision. But I do feel that there's a, uh, there's still an opportunity to really grow that magic and create that rugby festival. I think people listening to this will realise you are a rugby league aficionado. Yeah, <laughs> I, th- I think I'm right in saying. You're from Wigan, yes, which upsets everyone in Warrington, but yeah. there you go. You're from Wigan. You began your love affair with this game when you were six years old. I did. You're 42 yeah. now. Yeah. You still have a great sense that this is a fantastic game. You're involved in the very highest level as a yeah. chief executive of one of the leading clubs in the game. Yeah. Do you ever think, you know, you've had enough? No. You've... <laughs> <laughs> My wife might think that, but I've never, but I've never had enough of it. Do you know what? I, I, I tried to tally up the other day, actually, in terms of <laughs> any games I watch at the weekend. <laughs> with all the NRL games, the Super League games, the obviously the Championship games on on via play, and then have access to the to the Opta and watch, watch games on nights. But you never get you never get bored. I mean, it's something that I'm so so passionate about. And I was only thinking about this the other day, actually, that. Uh, I met a good friend of mine when I was went to my school. Actually, a guy called Marty McLaughlin. He played professionally. He uh, he signed at Wigan as a kid. I think he might have played at Oldham first team. He played for Ireland. Uh, he's he was the, he ended up being the I think he still is actually the marketing director for Wigan. Uh, Wigan Warriors. Uh, like I say, I, I I grew up with Martin. And when we was kids, we used to do what it's like probably uh, roster management now. We would uh, we'd write a squad, I'd pick Great Britain squads, for example, and we'd pick our Great Britain squad. It was a bit like top trumps, then we'd do our Wigan squad. <laughs> it was like doing roster management at the age of 10, 11 years of age. Uh, but yeah, look, I, I love the sport and just, just what it stands for. And look, I've had a I mean, great living out, out, out the game. I'm very fortunate to still be involved in the game and do something that... Do something that I really love and something that I'm 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 passionate about, 
and do you mean I don't feel like I've I've worked a day in my life? Uh, I know whilst, exactly how you while, feel. Whilst, whilst doing this, <laughs> whilst doing this job. So in terms of getting sick of it, no, couldn't be, couldn't be the opposite. I feel like the luckiest man alive in uh, doing what I do. Well, you're the second luckiest man alive because I had thirty years doing <laughs> doing what I was doing, and I loved every minute of it with with, with my old mate. The thing is, you were a you were a player. You were witness. Yeah. Uh, Salford, yeah. went to France, yeah. played for Ireland. Um, how did the transition come about? I know you do player welfare yeah, and you came. Yeah, yeah, how yeah. did the transition come about from from dressing room to boardroom? Because that's what it is. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, do you know what, Lloyd? And I often say this about players, that not all players, but a lot of players, a lot of professional players, certainly the ones that I come in contact with, that they've got those innate traits and characteristics that, because they've got to the top of the game and as a professional athlete, <clears throat> if they were to direct their energies into a different vocation, when, when they finish playing, they'll be successful. Because you think about it, they have their appraisal every week under the floodlights mm. and, the, and the feedback's brutal. If they don't deliver, they get told by the peers, the coaches, the press, the supporters, so to get their act together. Also, they're on fixed-term contracts just from the age of, what, 18, 19 till, till they finish. It may be two years, it may be three years, it may be 12 months. So they've got to have that desire to continue to deliver, continue to deliver. Otherwise, I mean, they, they risk losing the livelihood. Then you throw in the mix, like, adversity, overcoming injuries, overcoming, uh, getting getting dropped. That those, those are those characteristics that if you were to point that into a different vocation, and they're going to a different industry, they will be successful because they're the traits that you want to see from from employees, that drive as well, that single-minded drive to get something done, to get it over the line that you have to display to be a professional athlete. So I do believe that a lot of players, when they finish playing, and I don't like using the word retirement because of the negative connotations associated with that, that they should use that as a springboard to be successful in the next phase of their career. Look, what I say is I'm very fortunate. I've had, do you know what I mean? I've you can, have, you can have two dreams as a professional athlete, a dream to whatever that may be, representing your country, winning success, or because you become a professional player. But obviously, unfortunately, due to due to age, you can't do that forever. So you've had that one dream. Now you can have another dream in your next stage of your life. Whereas often in life, people only have one dream. But as a professional athlete, you can have two. So how good is that? So I think your approach when you finish playing is really important and get excited about it because I've been there myself and it is, it is difficult. It is, it is a bit nervous that you're earning decent money but it's not enough to sustain a lifestyle when you finish playing. But if you can leverage everything that you've learnt through playing into that next stage of your of your life and your career, I think a lot of, a lot of, a lot of players can be, can be successful. I think a lot can, sadly... Yeah. A lot do fall by yeah. the wayside, yeah, don't, do. and that's where the player welfare comes in. That I know you are also passionate yeah, about. Yeah, and do you know what? I, I think a lot of the times is it's sitting down with a player and just outlining the skills that they have. They don't realise no, they don't the realise sk- how good they are. How good they are, and do you know what I mean? Adaptability, uh, talking with the press, and all the things I mentioned earlier. Presentation, things that think research, self appraisal. They don't realise all those skills that they have. And it's quite a shame, actually, that you see a lot of players when they do finish that that they struggle because they've got so much to give society and so much to give different companies and organisations that if you just give them a bit, bit more guidance, that, as I say, they can, be, they can be successful and flourish after they finish playing as well. Uh, now, fortunately, the, the RFL are, are really big in this space now and... and and look, Warrington was one of the pioneers in this space in terms of player welfare and providing support for that, for the for the for the players because there is a correlation as well, Eddie. That if the players are happy off the field and are contented, they're going to deliver on the field as well. Mm. So it's preparing for that life after, life after rugby, and a byproduct of that is that the that the that the, the, the on field performances in, in, improve as well. Uh, but I think the RFL have done a tremendous job in recent years in really getting getting behind that. But I'll also say as well is the player is 100% accountable for their future. So I, I hear about I, I hear from the, the odd voice about oh, the RFL have not done this or the club have not done that. Well, once you finish playing, 
you're responsible for your future. Do you know what I mean? It's you that you need to provide for your family, and that's what's, that. Uh, that's basically you, you need to get your get your own act and house house in order. And that's something that used to spur me on was, and I don't know if it's due to me upbringing. And I read a book on this recently called The Psychology of Money, about always being concerned, not being able to provide for my family. And I think that comes back to my working class backgrounds. And even as a young kid, I'm worried about who my dad are going to pay the bills. Mm. Uh, how am I going to pay the bills when I get older? And that's something that drives me on. I think it's something that really spurs me on is just that fear of not being able to provide for my family. And, and, you've, that's, had, you've, and, had, and you've had your setbacks. And that's, why, and that's why I went, I, went, I went to university at the back end of my playing career. And I was the first person in my family to go to university and did a sports forms degree and did an, did an MBA, which I was fortunate to get a distinction in. But it was just that fear of not being able to provide for my family. Now, I did a sports performance degree because I thought I wanted to work as a strength and conditioner in the sports science department. I'd done a three-year degree, and then when I started, stepped in that department, I thought, yeah, I'm not too sure this is this, this is for me. But again, similar to those traits that I picked up being a, play, being a player that I could, I transitioned and applied into this role now, there was many learnings from my degree which wasn't necessarily related to the subject matter or the topic, such as... Uh, critical thinking, report writing, presentation skills, research, referencing, things of that nature, which I picked up, uh, which again helped me when I did my uh, did, 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 did my MBA. Uh, so yeah, it, look, it is, it is harrowing when you're coming to the end, but, but, but if you can prepare for that, I do believe that uh, you've got those skills and characteristics that they can be successful. I hope that if there are any players listening to this, they will take on board what you're saying because you've been there. You've, yeah. you've done all this. Yeah. You've looked ahead. I heard the story that when you were finished by Widmas, was it? You yeah. were applying for jobs all over the shop. <laughs> and you yeah. said to your mum, what do I put down here? They say, what's my, what's my occupation? Yeah, profession. Trust, and you yeah. put down? Yeah, professional rugby player. Down. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you know what I mean? My mum's been... Unbelievable in my life, and since I won't be where I am today without her, without support, without her support, and obviously it's just been Mother's Day, hasn't it? Was it? Was it? Was it yeah, Sunday, Sunday, Mother, yeah, yeah. Sunday, yeah. So it gave me an opportunity to tell my mum how much I love her and everything that she's done for me that I wouldn't be here today. But I think, like my dad, unfortunately, my dad passed away now. But he was they were just just so hard working, and I've said before, my dad used to pride himself on never having a day off work, and he worked in the building game until he was seventy two, which is just incredible. Wow. Mum worked in a biscuit factory. I mean, since she was 65, and again, uh, just pride themselves on just hard working, good people, and uh, my brother, and my, my brother as well, I suppose. So my brother's 10 years older than me, and you should say he's, he's, a, he's a workaholic. I used to go and work with him a little bit as well in doing ground working, and he was, he had this reputation that he was just an unbelievable grafter, likewise, my sister. So I think I've, I've obviously picked up a lot from them in terms of uh, understanding the importance of, of hard work, and it gets you where you are today and I'll say look Ed if I can do it do you know what I mean if I can do it get to where I've, where I've got to uh, do you know what I mean anyone can anyone can if you're willing to if you're willing to make the sacrifices and put in the hard work uh, you can do it you can. you can but the words you said there hard work sacrifices yeah. you know you've, you've got to do it you've got to you've got to put yourself out there to yeah. have a bash yeah. and you have and you do and you are okay 2017 you moved into Warrington yeah. You offered your services free, didn't you? You said, I'll come and do it for now. Yeah, I did. Not, not a CEO. Yeah, no, but yeah, I did. So I finished playing in, what, 20, 2010. Yeah. Finished playing in 2010. I knew Warrington were going places. I was just finishing up my sports performance degree. Wanted to get my foot in the door. Uh, and I approached Warrington for an opportunity. And fortunately, they, they, gave, they gave it me. They, like, I think it was three or four months that I, I worked for without... Without, without, without pay and I often mention that to pay all here they're still only four months, four months wages yeah, plus interest yeah, by plus way. interest yeah <laughs> plus, 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 plus interest but that's what you've got to do isn't it because once you're in yeah. you make your mark yeah look I, I sometimes I say this to, to the young players and or if we get someone on uh, work experiences what I say what are you going to do that's going to make you stand out than over the others. What are you going to do? What What is it? Because everyone's everyone's determined. Everyone's everyone to be a rugby league player. And do you know what I mean, there's thousands of kids in Warrington who want to be professional rugby league player. And then we get players into the scholarship, forty players into the scholarship, and then there's twenty play, twenty five players in the academy, all desperate to go to go out there and, and represent the first team. But what are you going to do to stand out? 
of your of your teammate or if you're coming for a, a, if you're doing work experience what are you going to do to stand out to ensure we give you that op- give you that opportunity and i thought with my academic background and with my get, getting my uh, sports performance degree with my playing background i thought that uh, if i can then put myself forward to then go and work as a volunteer to gain work experience not of, not other many other Super League players or former Super League players are going to do that, but that would make me stand out. And if a paid opportunity then became available, surely an opportunity would come come my way. So yeah, that's something that I've 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 kept with me even when I got to the uh got to the uh the start of my profession my playing career at Salford, which I spoke about previously that that I, I went and did the pre-season without pay again. I was just prepared to do what other people weren't prepared to do. Now, look, I understand sometimes there's limitations. You can't do that. We've got a family to provide for. I totally understand that. But is there other ways that you could stand out to uh, to ensure you get that foot in the door or you or you, or you get in before before somebody else or get that contractable somebody else? I'm not talking anything illegal or anything that's not, uh, that's not, that's not moral, anything immoral, absolutely not. But what are you prepared to do? that's going to make you stand out above the rest. Well, it's worked. And look at you. You're, you're in one of the top clubs in the business. You're running the business yeah. for two fantastic owners in Simon Moran and Stuart Middleton. Yeah. You must have to pinch yourself at times, don't you? That you? I mean, obviously, hard work, dedication, yeah. the fact that you would come here and say, I'll work for nothing for you for four months and see what I can do. It's paid off. But what a fantastic club a fantastic job yeah. you have got. I mean, I spoke to Derek last week, Derek Beaumont at Lee, and it was a similar question to him. Why why did people with big money come in <laughs> to a sports club? Because they know when they go out of it, they're going to end up yeah, with little money. Yeah, yeah. I know, and, and look, it's... You've not invested, have you? No, 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 <laughs> no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And we are so, so lucky to have... Obviously, Simon's been doing it for a number of years now, and Stuart... Uh, has, 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 has also come on, on onto the board and I know we were chatting earlier Eddie we look at last year and look it's not nice I was receiving I was doing the abuse I was getting but I, I accept it but I'm getting paid for this mm. they was getting a bit of abuse and they're putting significant significant amounts of money in it's, we are so so fortunate to have them uh, to have them involved in the club and look the finances are great but also it's just the support that they're passionate about the club. They're, well, you know, both the really, really passionate Warrentonians, and all they want is just success for this, for this team. Uh, and I've said previously, I think it's like you'd be hard to find uh, an individual that's had a bigger impact on a club, a single club than than Simon Moran. He's been doing this for a number of years, and I've got a great relationship with my speech with him most days. He's he's so pas- passionate about the about the game of, of rugby league. He, he stands on the terraces, doesn't he? he used, yeah, he has he has a, he has his own box now, but he. Oh right, but, he's moved but up when in he, the world. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but when he goes away, he'll go in the. Yeah, he'll, yes. he'll stand. Yes. He'll stand in the terraces. And such uh, an unassuming guy as well. Um, he's he's so I've learned so much from him and Stuart and Stuart as well, just indirectly. So one thing we sign is he just never gets never gets rattled. Just so. Uh, Considered all, all the time when we're in negotiations with a player, we think of players or an agent probably had us over on that one. Or we didn't. He's just takes the emotion out of it and just moves on. But yeah, they've they've, they've been brilliant, and also a guy that doesn't probably get the limelight that probably should at times. He's also passionate about the club and and I'm invested over time. He's a guy called Mike Lomax who uh, from Total Steel, who was a sponsor, would come on the board. Again, do you mean you, you cut him in half and he, he just he's like a like a Blackpool stick of rock. He says Warrington Wolves on his inside and. Uh, what he's given to this club in terms of my support for myself and sponsorship and investment. For example, he's uh, had to reconfigure the training ground uh, with building work, building renovations. He's done all that. So, in terms of the board support, uh, the wraps this this town, this this club, this community are so so lucky to have the board that we're doing. Very, very much very lucky. so. Very much so. You're absolutely right. Look, it's been fascinating talking to you. It's a great insight into your life your work and this club. Um, I've looked at the records uh, since 2017 when a certain man <laughs> came in to this job. Wembley 2019, beaten finalists 2018, beaten grand finalists 2018 for the fourth time. You yeah. mentioned the passionate supporters. I've left yeah. this question till the end. Okay. 
You mention the passionate supporters, a lot of them are my mates. And you right. know what they say to me? Yeah, I know what you're going to say. This is yeah. our year. You must yeah. be sick of hearing that. I am. <laughs> but, I, 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 but, but I'm going to ask you one more time. Is this the year? Right, okay. So, and I've been asked this a few times. <laughs> I've been asked this a few Particularly times. Particularly five from yeah, five. Yeah, yeah, And, and asked, oh, what does success look like this year? Look, we're happy with the squad. Uh, look... I don't want to say teams that, yeah, we, this is our year and we're, going, and we're going to do it. It's so early days, yeah. So <laughs> early days. And some teams, look at, look at Saints, who've had, who've, I mean, struggled, uh, lost, lost a couple of games. They are a champion club. They are a champion team. From top to bottom. They are champions. And that's what you're trying to build here, from top to champion. bottom. Champion. Champion. They'll be there coming in. The They'll still be there still the benchmark. Don't don't worry about that. Do you know what I mean? They saw that when, we, when they went over and beat Penrith in their own backyard. So they're still the benchmark. Uh, and you look obviously Catalan unbeaten so look I think we'll be challenging come the end of the season I'm not going to put me in I'm not going to do you know what I mean say that we're going to this is this is our year and I've been on. on my face Go because on, all the fans do you know what I, I've on. mentioned this in the past <laughs> that probably a lesson for me that I have heaped potential possibly pressure on the players and the team but we're going to do this and we're going to do that uh, so look, we just we just wanted to. And it's going to be cliche. They say you're not going to like it, but take each week as it comes. Yeah, that's exactly. boring, isn't it, mate. That's boring. Yeah, no, no, that's, no, no, that's boring. I've made a living out of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look, take each take each week as it comes. We've got another tricky tie this this week at Castleford. Look at the end of the season. If we're we're up there, we're going to give it a good shot. Uh, but do you know what? For we just mentioned the board. It just been so good for the supporters, for Simon, for Stuart, for Mike. That if we could. If we could deliver that big one, mate. If we could, and look, we've we've got a chance. We've got a chance. Uh, we've got to keep. We've got to be consistent throughout, throughout the year. But we're happy with the makeup of the squad. We're happy that, uh, with what with what we're building here, with the connection between the the players, the staff, the community, the supporters. So look, we're in a we're in a decent spot. But yeah, you're not going to get out me get out of me that we're going to be doing at the end of this end of this year. Look, it would be nice, but we've got a few hurdles to get over before we can start uh, taking that really seriously. I couldn't understand that completely, and you were very diplomatic. But you're very, very diplomatic. You, you've you've answered the, the question perfectly, Carl. Thank you so much Pleasure. for giving me your time today. It's it's been fascinating uh, listening to you um, and tremendous talking to you. And hopefully, it will be a great season. I'm not going to say it will be hopefully. your year. I hope it will be a great season for you all down here. The very best of luck to you for, for what lies ahead. Okay, that's it from the podcast this week. Next week, all being well, fingers crossed, the old fella, Steve-O, will be back in town and we'll be uh, sitting down and talking to him again. But for now, again, thanks to Carl Fitzpatrick for joining us and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>